the law. Well, I want to play an excerpt from a June 2009 Senate Judiciary Committee meeting when U.S. Senator Russ Feingold questioned Attorney General Eric Holder about warrantless wiretapping. In a speech to the American Constitutional Society in June 2008, uh, you, sir, said the following. I never thought that I would see the day when a president would act in direct defiance of federal law by authorizing warrantless NSA surveillance of American citizens. And the president himself, also uh, several times as a, a senator and during the campaign, said the program was illegal. Now that you are the attorney general, is there any doubt in your mind that the warrantless wiretapping program was illegal? Well, I think that the warrantless wiretapping program as it existed at that point was certainly unwise in that it was put together without the approval of Congress um, and as a result did not have um, all the protections, um, all the strength that it might have had behind it, as, as I think it now exists with regard to um, having had congressional approval of it. That was uh, that was Eric Holder. Uh, your uh, your response: uh, unwise or illegal? Uh, I admire Eric Holder. Uh, I actually had the honor and privilege of working with him uh, when I was in the criminal division of the Department of Justice. I, I, that is that is uh, not a very apt description of what was being done. You know, I understand there's some argument about this, but it, it's absolutely clear, using strict construction of the law, the law that we worked under said it was a federal felony for anyone to conduct electronic surveillance without going through the FISA court. That's what it said. It did not have an exception for the president. It didn't have an exception for time of war. It said anyone who does this without a warrant is guilty of a felony. And for myself, I think the real story here is that un, un, number, we don't know the number of Americans whose uh, phones were tapped. We don't know what happened with that information. And I think those people are entitled to know that their uh, information was seized. And I think people ought to be prosecuted for violating the law. It reminds me of Nixon um, when he said, if the president does it, it's not illegal. But, Thomas Tan, let me ask you two questions. Have people ever been notified who were illegally wiretapped? And I remember well the whole issue of the telecoms, like Verizon and AT&T, uh, being involved with this warrantless wiretapping. And at the time, Senator Obama said he would filibuster any attempt to give them retroactive immunity. He not only didn't filibuster, but ultimately—and it was soon before the Democratic National Convention, where he was nominated for—to be the presidential candidate—he um, not only didn't filibuster, he supported the retroactive immunity to the telecoms. And as we got into Denver for the Democratic Convention, AT&T um, logos were emblazoned on every delegate's bag of the DNC. What about this extended culpability? Well, I, I think that's really troublesome, uh, and it's disappointing to me that, that uh, I guess, we know politicians say things to get elected and then sometimes uh, change uh, their campaign promises or didn't live up to their campaign promises. Uh, I think it's outrageous that there was uh, retroactive immunity. The telecoms and the Department of Justice worked every day uh, with legally and lawfully getting these uh, uh, wiretaps approved by the FISA court. They knew, they knew what the law was. They employed very uh, sharp and expensive lawyers to advise them. And I am heartened that there is a case in the system now where uh, some plaintiffs have uh, shown that they have standing to challenge uh, their belief that they were wiretapped. And uh, the Court of Appeals, and I believe it's in the Second Circuit, has just recently uh, uh, made a ruling that they can go forward with that suit. And I think then we will learn. Uh, hopefully, how many people were illegally wiretapped, and then maybe we will learn what was done with that information. To answer your first question, I don't think those people have been notified. Um, the FISA statute actually contains uh, language that says, if, if we have gone up on in an emergency situation on somebody's phone, uh, we have 72 hours to present that information to a judge to basically get it approved. If that judge said that we did not have probable cause, we were obligated by the statute to notify the person who uh, was wiretapped and tell them that, in fact, their communications were seized. And, and I believe that that should, uh, that should happen to all the people that uh, got wiretapped uh, 
due to warrantless wiretapping. And, Amy, you're absolutely right. This, this is what the law was about, was because of the Nixon abuses, because Martin Luther King was wiretapped by the FBI, uh, you know, peace activists were wiretapped by the FBI. That is why we had that statute. And I believe, again, we have seen an abuse of executive authority. Well, Thomas Tan, we want to thank you very much. And just to clarify, when you say FISA stands for the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, Thomas Tam, former Justice Department attorney who helped expose the Bush administration's warrantless domestic surveillance program. It is now clear that the case against him, as he's been um, surveilled and wiretapped and harassed by the government, has now been dropped. Thank you so much for joining us for this broadcast exclusive. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace.